Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today, we gather to reflect on the call of true discipleship on this, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Wayman. There will be a second collection today for the annual mission appeal. This year's appeal is for the Archdiocese of Guwahati, India, and garnering assistance for their seminary program. At the sign of peace, a simple gesture or a bow is always appropriate. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good that we are here. It is good to take a respite from the busyness of our days, to begin our week with the Lord, with the true uh, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, with nourished on the word and strengthened by a community of believers in the heart of the city. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us just take a moment to call to mind any sins that we may have committed and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of air, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Mehola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing the twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elisha went over to him, and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks. of joy in your presence 
at your right hand, bliss forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free, so stand firm and do not submit to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus was uh, days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, he, they entered a Samaritan town village to prepare for his reception there. But they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus re returned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Fox have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me Go first and bury my father. But 
He answered him, Let the dead bury the dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, No one who has set his hand to the plow and looks to what is left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I want you to take a look at something in your own life is that you're very confident that you would not change. Very confident in your constitution that it is right. What is that for you? I'm thinking about that a lot for myself lately. What is that thing or things for this homily, I just ask you to concentrate on one thing. You're really confident that you would never go against in your own life. You kind of really want that again as a backdrop for today's breaking open today's scriptures. I think if we take a look at today's scriptures, we really have a central theme, a central theme of our Christian faith. Of our Christian walk really began with the opening prayer today talked about being adopted children adopted children of the light bringing us out of the darkness of air what a powerful prayer what a truthful prayer as children, we owe something to our parents. We owe something then to God. But if we take a look at even more deeply at the second reading, it talks about the freedom of God set us free. The freedom of God set us free. What a great line. What a truthful line. God gave us the free will to choose to love him, to love ourselves, and to love our neighbor. Now, sometimes we take that freedom and we don't follow in the light of the Holy Spirit. We don't follow what God has asked us and fall back into the darkness of error. That happens. But again, it's because of the freedom that God has set us free to be able to even choose that. See, sometimes our emotions, our feelings can lead us astray. We have to be very careful about that. Remember back in junior high, kind of like this one girl, she was kind of cute. As many people change in junior high. And I asked my friends, Hey, do you think I should ask her out? I'm not even sure what asking her out in junior high would mean, but ask my friends anyway. And they said, oh yeah, she's really cute. You should ask her out. I waited a few more days. There was something just kind of gnawing at me. Something even back then that I just recognized that it wasn't right. It wasn't what God was calling me to. It, was, it couldn't necessarily name it as that back then. But I never did end up asking her out. We entered high school, and she took a different route than I did, kind of a radical different route than I did. We were really happy that I never did date her. But I think about that because, again, our feelings... Our emotions can sometimes get us wrong. We can go down a wrong path because, again, as that second reading talks about, the flesh, its earthly existence, 
the things that come into our sensory can sometimes not be of God. So and sometimes lead us astray back into the darkness of air. But I think it, uh, <laughs> we jump to the gospel. It's an important line right away at the beginning of today's gospel. Jesus was resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. Now, we all know what Jerusalem meant and means, and he knew what it meant. That he would die and suffer greatly for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. But he was re resolutely determined to journey there. Things didn't distract him along the way. People and towns and villages would, didn't welcome him. But he was resolutely determined to stay on his journey. How important that is for us. I was talking to a friend a couple months ago. He said, why is it the Catholic Church always gets attacked? Why is it that the church, he said, I'm kind of sick of it. I wish it wouldn't. We were talking with another friend. Friend had a great wisdom. He says, because we're following the light of truth. We're bringing that light of truth to the world. And some prefer to be in the darkness of air. That's the truth. But it doesn't mean that we should be unresolute in our journey. It doesn't mean that we should change any teaching because of a poll, because of what people feel, or just to make people feel better. Because the truth will set us free, and that freedom of God will be there. Remember back in <clears> the <throat> beginning of COVID, we all have different COVID stories. But I remember my mother being in her <clears throat> 90s and in a nursing home. I couldn't visit her. I couldn't visit her for over a year. And I kept getting more and more mad, more and more frustrated. As more and more rules and regulations kept coming out, more and more mad at those that set these rules. Yes, it was to protect my mother. I get it. But it still hurt that I couldn't see her. Still was a pain. And I remember bringing that pain, that hurt, to my spiritual director. And he said, well, I'm sorry that you're feeling that. I can imagine the pain. But he said, focus on this. Yes, your mother only has so much time left here on earth. And yes, this might be a big chunk of her time left on earth. But focus on the desire for heaven. Focus on that she gets to heaven. And that one day you may follow. Because that then is for all eternity. Now, yes, is it good to see my mom? Absolutely. So there's some goods in life that will appear good, but God doesn't want us to have at that moment. God doesn't desire it for us for one reason or another. It's okay. Because again, it's in God's light. It's in God's truth that we are adopted children of God. And that's what we need to be able to focus on. When Satan attacks us, when we're frustrated because everybody else gets to do something and we don't, because we follow the light, we follow the truth that God has set before us, because we're resolute on our journey. And again, I've seen it time and time again that we get resolute on something in our own head. 
and then a circumstance changes it. Just a quick example. A lot of older people will come to confession, widows, and they'll talk to me about <clears throat> their friend that they have at this point in their life. They're confessing some aspect of that relationship. And I'll talk to them, I say, well, yeah, but what would you say to your 20-year-old grandson? Well, that would be wrong for them, Father. Well, why is it wrong for a 20-year-old and not an 80-year-old? See, we fall into that trap in our lives. We fall into that trap because we prefer sometimes the darkness of air. But we need to be resolute on our journey. Again, I asked you to think about something in your own life. Where did that constitution, where did that <clears throat> meaning come for you? Where did that come into your life? How strong is that resolute? How determined are you to continue to follow it? Is it a resolute that is based on the truth of God? Or is it just something you desire? Something you feel? The freedom of God has set us free to be resolute on our journey. With great confidence, with great conviction, with great hope, let us profess our common faith together. I believe. Confident that the Father hears and answers our humble prayers, let us turn to him this morning with our petitions. 
that the church might respond to Jesus' call with faithfulness and sincerity, so to build up the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That local and world leaders might work to dismantle systems of structural racism in our community and country. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sem seminarians and staff of the seminary in Bhagatagon, India, may they have all the resources needed for the education and training of priests for their diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For an end to the war in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the disciples of Christ gathered here today, may we further God's reign by being faithful to God's command to love our neighbor as ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are in need of God's healing, especially those mentioned in our prayer ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they journey with Jesus into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all of these prayers and the prayers deep in our heart, and we especially pray for the one among us who may need our prayers the most. We ask this through Christ our Lord. You may be seated for today's collections. <clears throat> there is a second collection today. Again, it is for a seminary over in India, in northeast India. It was started in 2016, and it started with 16 uh, uh, students at that time. They have now grown to uh, 89 men and 9 women. And so what a beautiful growth in six years in that seminary. Because what they did is they decided that they had a need. They had a need to raise up young people in the, in the great gift of philosophy. This is what St. Clement's College is about, a philosophy. And to raise that up, to be able to uh, form them and to shape them and to help them learn and to be critical thinkers. And so that's what philosophy does and what a beautiful gift it is. It's also a precursor to uh, priesthood and religious life. And so I ask you to be as generous as you can be in the second collection. What a great gift because they recognize the need, they saw the need, and it is coming to fruition over there. And every diocese uh, takes up different collections, and every parish in our diocese takes up a collection in the summer for different missions. And this is our mission this year. Uh, the priest that was going to be here uh, this weekend uh, couldn't get out of the country, so uh, we are just doing it locally here. But I thank you so much for your generous support to this uh, particular need over in India. And if you can't give today, feel free to bring your check next week and just put it uh, in the memo, uh, the Missionary Appeal of India, and we will get it to the right spot. But I thank you so much for your generous support.
Christ and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplishes the effects of your mystery, grant, we pray, that, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you lay the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself. So, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased and confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Archbishop Hebda, our Bishop, Bishop Williams, his auxiliary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
just allow this Eucharist to touch your deepest wound this day. Allow Jesus to examine that wound. If you are able, allow Jesus to touch that wound. And let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. And I thank you so much for being here. Again, every weekend we have uh, parking available at the Minneapolis uh, lot right across the street there, Minneapolis Club, uh, in the ramp. If you do park there, you do now need to have a validation sticker put on your ticket, and those are available in the Narthex area there by the security area. And so please make sure you uh, grab that before you go out if you've parked over there. But again, what a beautiful gift it is that they are uh, able to accommodate us to be able to park over there. And that is every Sunday, every holy day uh, that you need to be able to park over there, feel free to do so, and you can just get a voucher from us. I thank you again so much for being here. Um, I know there are a couple of different people from North Dakota. The people that brought up the gifts were from North Dakota. There's another family from North Dakota over there. Uh, they came in for the uh, baseball game. Uh, one came in for the wedding. Anyone else from out of state? Where are you from? Iowa? Iowa. Ohio. Arizona. Arizona. What brings you into town? Uh, my husband is going to the convention. Wonderful. Wonderful. What brings you into town? Baseball game. Wonderful. I should go to a baseball game. <laughs> Everybody seems to go from out of state. But again, our uh, choir sang at the Twins game on Wednesday. What a beautiful gift it is. Uh, the people that brought up the gifts on Saturday night thought that the choir was going to sing again, so they came into town um, from Colorado to do it. And I'm like, no, the choir isn't singing every day. But they did a great job there. I thank all of those that did sing in the choir. What a beautiful gift it is uh, to be able to raise our voices and to be a witness of God's love into the greater city. I thank you all so very much for being here. To celebrating our Mass with you is a great privilege. So thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.